uh, as a kid we loved to play with lantern and we would walk around the neighborhood carrying the lantern and, and, and see the lantern lit at night. Before we left, she gave me a can of bear spray and a flashlight because she said there's a lot of bears um, outside of the, um, of the lake, so that was a little unnerving. I used to work as a journalist and I did that job for five years. Going to the World's Fair in New York in 1964 with my grandfather, who was an avid cameraman, loved to make movies. Those memories are as close to me as, I mean, just talking about it, I can see them. If you could hold on to one memory for your life forever, what would that be? Hmm. One memory from my, from my whole life. It was fourth grade was my first exchange student and he was from South Korea. When he was in my house, we were like best friends. We were just amazing together. My highlight of the day is um, I usually get about 45 minutes to an hour of play time with Sebi and we play Legos. This is a photo that I keep in my office I've kept it with me for the last 15 years. Every Friday we would go and we would, it would be camping, but it wasn't actually camping because we were indoors. We would get like these little tent things and um, just hang out. Last year I had the opportunity to spend some time in the Yucatan Peninsula uh, in Mexico. It was very cool. Uh, it was great to be in a different place. I'm not so fast paced anymore and not in such a big hurry to where I notice the little things as he's growing that I wouldn't have noticed 25 years ago. My grandmother was sort of like the person who I could tell anything to and she really helped me to become the person that I am. I was a student for many, many years and I'd still be a student today if I could be. I love being a student. I love the academic calendar. I love the the rhythm of the school year, and I love the, the focus on um, the mind. I didn't really care that he was from Korea or anything like that. It was just, oh cool, another play uh, buddy, pretty much. We try to build the tallest tower that we can that will stand up. So we build towers. We built towers all the way to the ceiling with Legos, from the floor to the ceiling. <laughs> oh, my life has not always been this great. For those of you who have suicide in your family experience, or those who have been closely associated with you, I can sympathize with that. I've been on my own since I was like 14. Both my parents are addicted to drugs right now. I have no idea where they are. And that it's been a real struggle trying to get back into the swing of things. It's been years since I've been to school. At the age of 17, I was remanded to adult court. I was the first black female in the state of Oregon to have committed a drive-by shooting. I uh, joined the military uh, kind of in a naive situation, thinking that I was uh, not going to uh, see what I saw. Regrets, we all have regrets. You know, I deserve to be who I am and know that where I was is not who I'm going to be. I'm a mother of four kids, two girls, two boys. I didn't think I would make it to 18 or that I would be in college and that I would have a job and I would definitely didn't think I would be by myself, but yet here I am. Yep, believe in yourself. Things, good things will come. If they can do it, we can do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If you put your mind to it, you can always do it. I want the whole community just to remember me, like, hey, Keith was that guy that got things started. He was that guy that just made us feel empowered, made us feel like we can do it, made us feel like we can speak up. That's the type of person that I'm happy to be, and that's the type of person I want to be remembered as. So I went to double major with health science and biology, and I went to, like, hopefully graduate with a bachelor's of science degree, then head off to med school. Uh, what I want to get from my career is actually to go back home and provide some type of um, resource or a different system that can help my uh, village back home. 
I would love to work with different uh, group of people, with different students uh, from different countries, with different perspectives and views. I would like to learn from them and also what I have learned, I would like to help them. So when you look at me and you see a, a white guy with a beard, you probably don't immediately recognize someone who's been a vegetarian for over 40 years. You probably don't recognize someone who's been influenced by Hindu worldview and who believes in reincarnation. I'm always seen as an immigrant and I'm okay with that because I am. A lot of people don't think about this, but uh, America is not just this country. America is the whole continent. Um, so this is North America. I'm from Central America. Uh, so in technical terms, I'm also a Native American. I originally came from Malaysia. Um, I have, uh, I would consider myself multicultural because my ancestor um, came from China. So I grew up uh, learning a lot of Chinese culture and tradition. First of all, I wasn't born in the United States. I was born in, in Bombay, India. And then we lived in Bangkok, Thailand until I was almost seven. I'm originally from Somalia and I came here when I was about four years old from Kenya. I'm from Taiwan and I'm a Chinese. Uh, I am originally from Afghanistan. I'm actually from Cambodia. So should I. Oh! You have something to give and um, that as you pour into yourself, you then are able to pour into others. Encourage other people to care about others, to learn from others, to not just respect diversity, but to embrace it, to incorporate it into themselves.